so in the last session we basically went over the problem of scheduling okay and what we were doing with scheduling was that we were looking at the problem of uh, you know we took up the example of the differential equation uh, solver and found that you know we can identify a certain set of tasks there are some multiplications some additions subtractions and comparisons are also considered as additions itself and uh, once we have all of that in place we have the dependencies between those tasks okay and what we found was you know i mean i could actually go through and systematically come up with a schedule of those operations on uh, a certain limited amount of hardware what i want to do first is to sort of tell you i mean give you some kind of a feel for the complexity of the problem of scheduling okay so you know based on the example that we went through last time you might have the thing that you know i create this ready list i create the waiting list i just basically take things from the ready list put them onto a, whatever processor is available it seems like a fairly straightforward way of doing scheduling okay now yes that does work in practice and some variant of that is in fact what is used the question is will that always give you the best possible schedule okay so the first thing that i want to do is to sort of give motivate the argument that this scheduling problem is actually much more complex than that what i mean by much more complex is there could be a certain set of situations where you know uh, the sort of simple scheduling approaches that we take will not give us good answers okay so to as an example of that i am basically taking up this thing that i call a bag of tasks okay and what i mean by a bag of tasks is i have just basically drawn one circle with you know a few t1 t2 t3 up to tn drawn inside it these are a set of tasks that need to get completed and what i'm saying is they don't have any dependencies between them you are free to do them in whichever order you want okay so whichever order you want uh, whichever uh, uh, i mean uh, at whichever time you want to start any one of them there is nothing there are no dependencies over here at all right your goal ultimately is just to sort of finish all the tasks as quickly as possible okay and i'm putting a constraint now which is to say that i'm giving you only two processors to work with okay so before we get to two processors if we look at the problem of a single processor right if i look at a single processor then the minimum time how will i achieve that i pretty much start at time 0 right i just finish t1 then i finish t2 i finish t3 right i go through like this until i get to tn okay which means that the summation of well di i equal to 1 to n right where di equals delay of task ti right this is going to be the minimum possible finish time right so this is fairly obvious it doesn't matter whether you do it in the order t1 t2 t3 or t3 t2 t1 tn you know whichever way you do it it will add up to the same result okay so the total time taken is going to be the same irrespective of the order in which you do this okay so now uh what happens when i go to two processors okay and the first question that i can ask is what is the minimum possible time that i can take okay so if i asked you what is the minimum possible time that you can take i would sort of assume that you know i would like to balance the tasks out right maybe i put t1 over here right then put t2 over here maybe put t3 and so on right so that i'll get in the ideal situation both of these end exactly at the same time right so the ideal finish time is going to be equal to summation of di divided by 2 the number of processors okay but why do i say ideal because these tasks are discrete so in other words once i start t1 on processor p1 i can't at some point cut it and then suddenly move on to p2 okay i'm assuming that these are I mean, you can call them non preemptible tasks if you want 
right in other words once i start a task i have to run it through till the finish okay so if that is the case obviously now the granularity of the sum also depends on the granularity of the task how many cycles or how much time is each one of those tasks taking will determine whether or not i can get this perfectly balanced right so as an example i could go with this you know t1 t2 then say i find t3 over here right i'm just doing the intuitive way of putting tasks right i take them one at a time i first take t1 then i take t2 then i take t3 in whatever order right i mean this t1 t2 t3 order was given by someone now what should i do when i get t4 the question becomes should i put it on p1 or p2 right in fact even with t3 the question was should i have put it on p1 or p2 i put it on p1 because p1 had less uh an, an earlier finish time as of that point which means p4 also should go there right now it looks as though the next task t5 should go on to t uh, on to p2 okay so in other words all that i'm saying is a purely intuitive approach for taking the tasks and putting them in their places so obviously there are some problems here the first and foremost is the finish time now depends on the order that i choose right and it is not clear in what order i should choose them right do i just sort of uh, choose them at random or do i go through uh, in is there a specific order that would give me the best possible result and so on okay by the way one piece of terminology this finishing time right the time when all tasks are completed is called the make span okay this is just a terminology and this chart itself by the way you know is you are probably familiar with the idea of a gantt chart right we also looked at it earlier in another context when we were talking about uh, the firing sequences and so on right so gantt charts make span lot of this terminology comes from the domain of uh, uh, operations research job scheduling okay and in fact a large part of what we are talking about over here most of the sort of early research in this area came from that domain so if you look at the terminology even things like critical path right and uh, gantt chart make span schedule even the basic idea of schedule all of those things come from the operations research domain many of the ideas that are used over here come from that domain but there are like enough twists that have been added on in the domain in the context of you know uh, basically computer science right now even here what you will find is that if you have done a course on let's say uh, operating systems you will know that operating systems also also have their own internal schedulers right or if you have done a course on real time systems real time systems also do this problem of scheduling okay what we are talking about over here of course is within the context of signal processing applications right so the basic ideas are exactly the same as in any one of those contexts whether it is or or os or real time systems but there are some extra things that come up in the context of dsp which may or may not be usable and you know there could be some specialized algorithms that are able to make use of that fact okay so now i have shown that this is the problem we are trying to solve right basically we need to assign the tasks over here and uh, one thing that i have mentioned is this order t1 t2 t3 in which i pick up the tasks right maybe this is not the only or even the best way of selecting them right in fact intuitively if you ask me i would probably say that you know sort them in descending order of uh, the execution time right in other words if i put t2 and pick that the first in order to schedule it onto a processor then the chances are better that i would probably be able to you know match things nicely and get a good uh, value of the overall make span right this ideal make span what is it going to be this is exactly that value i mentioned earlier sigma di divided by 2 in this case okay so that is our goal to try and make the make span equal to sigma di divided by 2 for a two processor system for a three processor system it would be divided by 3 and so on okay now the problem statement hopefully you know you all agree that it is a very simple statement what i'm going to do is cast it slightly differently and say that you know what if i had a set of numbers given to me 
okay n1 is equal to 1 n2 is equal to 5 n3 equal to 10 n4 equal to 5 and so on right and i ask you to divide this into two subsets right s1 and s2 and you are now asked to put n1 and n all the ni's into one of the two subsets such that the total sum across each subset that value v1 minus v2 right the absolute value of v1 minus v2 is minimized okay so i hope you agree that you know this is exactly the same problem as this previous problem that we have here right because as long as i am able to decide which task goes on to which processor all i need to do is add up the delays okay and it turns out i'm not going to try and prove it but it turns out that the subset sum problem is already known to be what is called an np hard problem what does np hard problem mean the definition of np hard so to say is that there are a certain class of problems that are already known to be difficult right and this subset sum problem is such that any one of those hard problems can be reduced to the subset sum problem okay think about it what that is saying is we know that there are some problems that we believe to be very hard to solve and we are in turn saying that i can take those problems and reduce them to a subset sum problem what that means is if i could solve the subset problem efficiently i could also have solved those other problems efficiently okay that is pretty much in a nutshell what np hard means okay now if you think further about it basically what that is saying is that subset sum problem is as at least as hard as any one of those other problems that we also know to be hard what do i mean by hard it basically means that i don't have any known algorithm that will solve it efficiently in polynomial time okay which means that the subset sum problem in turn is an np hard problem okay is is basically a hard problem to solve now why is it that something which is so easy to describe and looks intuitively simple is hard to solve the problem comes not for you know if if i have let's say 10 numbers or 20 numbers or something like that i can always solve it right subset sum is easy to solve the problem comes when i start increasing the values 1000 numbers 10000 numbers right at some point i will re, uh, not at some point you know as i go larger to larger and larger total number of values in this bag right i will get to the point where being able to show that you know i am actually getting that modulus of v1 minus v2 is the minimum possible proving that becomes very difficult okay because of course if i get it equal to 0 i am done because that is the theoretical minimum that i can get but in practice you may not get to 0 then the question becomes okay how close to zero have i got and could i have reduced it still further could i have got something a little bit better okay so subset sum problem is a np hard problem therefore even something as simple as a two processor scheduling problem even without dependencies is an np hard problem in practice what we are interested in is something much more complicated than that right we typically have dependencies we might have more than two types of processor more than two processors more than two types of processors right as and when you start adding more and more complexity into the problem it only gets worse 